Hi, this is Jeff Brown, host of the Read to Lead podcast and author of the forthcoming Read to Lead, The Simple Habit That Expands Your Influence and Boosts Your Career. And this is the Relationships and Revenue podcast with John Hewlin. Welcome to the Relationships and Revenue podcast with John Hewlin. Welcome back, everyone, to the Relationships and Revenue Podcast. I am your humble host, John Hewlin. So glad you decided to join us today, either by listening or watching. And as you heard from that fantastic intro, it is my honor to have a hero of mine when it comes to the podcasting world, Jeff Brown. Jeff, how are you? I am great. It's uh, wonderful to be here, John, and thank you for those kind words. I appreciate it. You bet. Uh, Folks, it would be... I am underplaying this when I'm saying it, when it comes to podcasting, two (laughs) things. First thing is there are very few podcasts. I make sure that I do not miss an episode. Jeff's podcast is one of those. Mm, It's called read, read to lead. Now see, I was pretty full of myself recently because I had completed 50 episodes of my podcast that sounds great until you know that Jeff has 371. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) Jeff's been doing a lot, lot longer than me and doing it really, really well. So I highly encourage you to check out what Jeff is doing on his podcast. It is amazing. He has some of the most fantastic guests on there. And as you might imagine, read to lead, he has authors on there and their books on there. Oh my gosh. I've picked up so many fantastic books to read. I've been introduced to new people because of Jeff. So Jeff, thank you for what you're doing on your podcast. It is making a difference. Well, that is so humbling and and great to hear. The reason I started it was to try to help get more noses and more books and and get some exposure uh, for some of these authors who I have so much appreciation for. So it's nice to know that uh, it's working. At least there's one person listening anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet you know there's more than one. So, <laughs> all right. Well, folks, let me tell you a little bit about Jeff. Now, obviously, you know that he is the host of Read to Lead, which is a podcast you should be listening to. Because, and first of all, folks, I did an episode a while back where I talked about my top five podcasts that I listen to and recommend. And if you remember, Jeff's was on that list. Mm-hmm. So, if you're taking notes at home, this is it. So read to lead is definitely something you need to get a hold of. But besides the fact that Jeff is a podcaster and host of read to lead, he's a speaker. He's also a coach and he's an author. As he mentioned before, he has written a book and it is coming out later this year in 2021. And if we are fortunate enough, we'll get Jeff back on here and we'll talk directly to him about the book. So super excited about that, but he has another title. And my suspicion is that Jeff holds this title in the highest regard above all the others. Husband to Annie. (laughs) Uh, Yes. And doer of whatever she says. (laughs) As every good husband should. (laughs) That's right. That's right. I love that. So Jeff, if anybody takes a look at your website, any of the social media platforms that you're on, it becomes very obvious very quickly. You care about entrepreneurs. That's mm, it's very you. obvious that you care about entrepreneurs. And I, I took something from your website and it says it this way. It says that you help bridge the gap between, let's see, it helps if I could actually read my own handwriting, bridge the gap <laughs> between. Intention. Thank you. Intention and implementation. <laughs> See, I can't even read my own handwriting. See, we're being real here on the podcast, folks. So, That's right. <laughs> so help us understand more about what you mean by that. Yeah, it, it, you know, on the service, it probably sounds very, very generic, like a lot of people could say that. But um, you, I've, in, in my own background, in my own um, uh, past, um, I was very much a consumer of knowledge. And it took me a while to understand that knowledge is not power, as the as the saying or quote goes. Uh, knowledge put into practice, uh, to me, is power. In fact, knowledge mm. times experience equals wisdom, right? There you go. And so uh, what I have discovered is there are a lot of people that are like me or like I was and are, and are seeking all this knowledge, but then struggle with the execution part of those things mm-hmm. that they've learned. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and, and one of the things they struggle with is, is books that they're reading and then putting into action what they're learning. Mm. And so it's my conversations with some of these authors where I try to make that a little bit easier to, to manage as well as with the things that I write in the book that's coming out. It's all about uh, the, the execution side of things, which I think is a, is a struggle for a lot of people. Okay. Okay. Well, you mentioned briefly about your background. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of share with us your journey, kind of how did mm -hmm. you start on this entrepreneurial journey and what led you to where you are right now? Yeah, I was in radio for 26 years up until 2013. Um, and I think if memory serves, I've probably lost all but one radio job that I've had, <laughs> some through no fault of my own. Uh, but, uh, after that had happened a few times, uh, I began sort of working a side hustle and kind of dipping my toe into what would it be like if I were to do my own thing, um, and have my own clients. And I did that for, and was doing that for about three years. Um, at, and th at that point I began talking to Annie, my wife about, you know, what it might look like, what life might look like after radio, like what might I do? If I were to leave my job, I had been doing it, as I said, for 26 years, and I'd kind of done all the things that I'd ever wanted to do in radio. Mm -hmm. um, and we began having those conversations, and we set some dates and some goals. Uh, and about six months before those dates were to, to transpire, I lost the radio job I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And that forced me to kind of move up my timeline. <laughs> um, thankfully, I had been building that bridge, that side hustle. And so what I did was I jumped headfirst into that right out of the gate. Nice. And the interesting thing, John, was within 30 days of doing that and working on that full time, my take-home pay in that 30 days was twice what my take-home pay in 30 days was at the old job. Wow. And so even though that thing I was doing was not something I planned necessarily to do long term, between that and the severance that I received, I knew I had... Um, a longer runway than I initially thought I had mm. to figuring things out. So that gave me about six or eight months to, to do exactly that, to figure things out. Nice. Um, I had already begun planning launching a podcast when this happened. Mm. In fact, the two days after I got let go, I had already scheduled an interview with my first guest. Mm. And so here I am interviewing Dan Miller, for my episode you know, one of my podcast, I had just been let go from my job wow. two days before that. And so, you know, that was in motion. That was going to happen anyway. But as that launched and began to sort of gain some traction, um, I realized I might be able to do some things with that that I hadn't really planned on. Wow. That's amazing. Now, first of all, it is not hard to tell that you have a background in radio. <laughs> that is not hard. I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <clears throat> do you? I'm just curious about this. Do you get requests for like uh, voiceover work or uh, like someone they they like they write a book, but it's like they don't like the sound of their own voice, so they're like, "Hey, Jeff, would you do the audio book for me?" That sort of thing. You know, I don't get a lot of requests because up until recently, I haven't even put myself out there in that regard. But in the mm -hmm. last, it's funny you mentioned that in the last couple of months, I've started doing more of that type of work and making it known mm -hmm. that I'm accepting that kind of work. I actually had to audition to voice my own audiobook. <laughs> by oh the way. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm happy to report I did get the gig and I will be voicing <laughs> that later next month. <laughs> All right. All right. That's fantastic. Okay. So <clears throat> talk to us a little bit more about your podcast, about Read to Lead, just the mm -hmm. whole thought press behind, process behind starting it, uh, mm -hmm. why you do it in the format that you do it. Why did you choose to emphasize not just the reading, but obviously bringing on authors as your guests and doing it primarily interview style. Yeah, I, um, I had thought about doing a podcast for about five years before I actually started one. Honestly, mm. I, about 2008 is when I began thinking about that and it didn't launch till 2013. But I, I didn't know what I'd do a podcast about. Mm. Um, this passion for reading that I have, um, it sort of died out when I was young and was reignited 
in about 2003 when I came across a book called Purple Cow by Seth Godin mm. uh, uh, that kind of came about as a book club inside this company that I was later let go from. <laughs> um, and I just, I just ate it up and I, I just wasn't aware in my early thirties of what was out there in the book world. And, mm. and I was fascinated by marketing and, you know, Seth, you know, it was all about marketing. And then I read Pat Lincioni's five dysfunctions of a team and, yep. um, some John Maxwell, uh, works and I just couldn't get enough of it. And one day in 2013, I was on my way home from this job and listening to audiobooks as I often did in, in, during my commute. Mm -hmm. And I was counting up the books I had read and realized that I had been reading about a book a week. Wow. Um, so far that year. And when I realized I'd been reading a book a week, just the light bulb went off in my head. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe there's a podcast idea there that I've been looking for. Um, I was, I was quite taken with, um, this sort of phrase that had been kicked around in my head that I'd heard, I think Michael Hyatt mentioned, and that was that leaders read and readers lead. Mm -hmm. And I shortened that to read to lead and, and began planning the podcast as soon as that idea popped in my head. Mm -hmm. And I, as far as, you know, the format and all that, um, I was fascinated with these books I was reading. I thought, how cool would it be to actually interview the authors and disseminate the information that way versus just me reading it and summarizing it and doing a solo podcast, let's say. Mm -hmm. Plus, I thought, you know, free books. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that too. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, I mean, I'm not a foreign in my radio background. I'm not, I'm not completely, um, what I mean is, um, uh, I mean, I know a little bit about, you know, getting people on a radio show and, and how sure. to reach out, you know, that, that the whole process is not foreign to me. And so uh, I just began reaching out to people, starting with people I had relationships with. And Dan Miller, who I mentioned a moment ago, was one of those people. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. he'll probably say yes. And then Dan introduced me to the guy who was the next guest on my podcast, you mm -hmm. know, and et cetera, et cetera. So it kind of came about that way. And it just took off. I, I just loved doing it. And, you know, here eight years later, I'm still doing it. Oh, yeah. And and folks, when I tell you that it is one that I listen to every time an episode comes out, there's something else you need to understand. Jeff's podcast is not only highly regarded, but it's highly ranked. I mean, lots and lots of people listen to this podcast. So I'm not telling you something that, you know, some Joe Schmo just started, you know, three weeks ago in his basement. Um <laughs> Jeff's been doing this a long time. 2013, right? Is when you started? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, he has 371 episodes as of this week, which is mid to late May 2021 is when we're recording this. So that's why I tell you to pay attention. Jeff knows what he's doing. Let's go a little bit further with that, Jeff. Mm -hmm. So you have the podcast and you're doing it and you're inviting authors to come in. What I'm genuinely curious about, who are some of the more fascinating guests that you've had? Uh, some that you expected it to be that way and others you were surprised by. Mm. Yeah, certainly one that I expected uh, to be fascinated by was Seth Godin. Um, mm -hmm. I mentioned my love for Purple Cow and the impact that had on me. In fact, he doesn't know it yet, but uh, my book coming out is dedicated in part to Seth. Wow. Um, for that reason. Um, but I expected him to bring the goods and boy, did he, um, I had <laughs> a chance to interview him a second time since then, uh, recently. Uh, but that was just a really surreal moment too, having one of his books impacting me so greatly. And then several years later, interviewing him and sitting down with him one-on-one -on -one for, you know, half hour, 45 minutes or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and Seth just has a way about him of, um, such an economy of words. I mean, there's not one word wasted when mm. he speaks. It's you would almost think uh, to be so well spoken and eloquent, like he's got a a script <laughs> in front of him 24/7. Uh, yeah, again, no word is wasted, and it's just amazing to me how great a communicator he is. Mm. Um, on the unexpected side, uh, there have been. I don't, I don't know if I can think of a specific name, but I know in the in my in the recesses of my mind, I can think of like several authors that the average person just wouldn't necessarily know by name. Mm -hmm. 
um, who just really, you know, brought brought it. You know, I mean, they're just <laughs> really uh, knocked it out of the park. I'm I'm trying to think of well, one is um, her book. I think has since gone on to be a bestseller, but I didn't get the sense a lot of people knew her at the time that I first interviewed her, interviewed her and that was Liz Weissman. Uh, mm. a book called Multipliers, How the Best Leaders Make Everyone Smarter. And that was a book mm. that impacted me a great deal when I was still working a regular job. And um, she was just fascinating to interview. And I just loved her book and have interviewed her a second or third time since. That book mm. is now out in the 10th anniversary edition, and she's released another book or two since then. So um, yeah, yeah, I could rattle off a bunch of others that you know just aren't well known but mm -hmm. who are made for great guests, great interviews. Mm. Uh, but Liz, Liz probably is the top of that list. Gotcha. All right. Well, let me ask a somewhat challenging question. Have you had some authors on as guests? And after you were finished with the interview, you were like, I can't play this. It's mm. just not listenable i don't think is even a word but you know what i mean when i say it <laughs> yeah um you know and i've been asked that uh before at, at conferences uh when i'm speaking on you know maybe the topic of interviewing as it relates to podcasting mm -hmm. um and i i have a little bit of an advantage i think over most interviewers in that i'm interviewing authors who tend to get interviewed a lot Oh. And so that means that not only are they more practiced, but also I have the ability to go out and hear what they've done before I invite them onto my show. Okay. And because I have that sort of built in to the structure of my show, it's rare that I get surprised. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if I, I can't think of a single instance where I have been, to be honest, John. And if I were surprised, I'd have nobody to blame but myself. Okay. Um, it, it'd be my fault uh, because sure. I didn't do my homework, you know? And gotcha. so not everybody has that, that advantage in who they interview. Mm -hmm. um, but that was an, not an advantage that I planned or anticipated, but as I began doing the show, realized the advantage that that was. And so I, I go out of my way. Oftentimes, uh, you know, I'm getting pitched all the time. <laughs> and that's one of the first things I'll do is I'll go out and, and listen to previous interviews or ask mm -hmm that uh, they send a link, sure. um, and, you know, things like, or look for, you know, public speaking uh, videos on YouTube, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that often eliminates, um, you know, that from happening. Wow. So how often are you getting pitched? Um, maybe not as much as some, but probably a half a dozen a day, Monday through Friday. Wow. Um, and so, you know, that's, uh, what is that, 25, 30 a week? Mm -hmm. uh, and you multiply that by 50, 52 weeks, that yeah. it's in the thousands, you know, a year. Right. And I've got 52 slots. And those are pitches mm -hmm. often unsolicited. Oh, you know, There's books that I'm paying attention to that, <laughs> you know, have written by authors that I want to invite on who haven't pitched me. And so mm -hmm. those people are going to take up a few of those 52 slots. So that leaves even fewer for those 1,500 or 2,000 that are, you know, pitching me. Sure, sure. Okay. I want to go a little bit different direction. It's related mm -hmm. to the podcast. But yeah. as you went on with the podcast, you started adding some things to, mm -hmm. to be of help to podcasters and would be podcasters. Mm -hmm. Things like your podcaster academy. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, that was the first course uh, that I offered. Um, and I hadn't been podcasting for very long, I think maybe six or eight months, I probably, mm. uh, you know, could have spent some more time in the space. But I began about four or five months into podcasting getting requests from people mm -hmm. um, who were asking me if, if I would get any training, they, they either liked the show or they saw the, the success it was having. I was in a mastermind group and the people in the mastermind group telling me that I needed to do a course on podcasting. I was like, no, no, there's other, there's John Lee Dumas who just jumped into the fray at that time. And there's Cliff mm -hmm. Ravenscraft and, you know, I'm just, you know, 
I'm just Jeff, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until I started getting unsolicited requests, uh, from listeners, uh, mm -hmm. and people who were coming, uh, to the show, you know, through other means organically or whatnot, that I began to, it's kind of like, you know, your parents can tell you something and you don't pay attention, but then a friend or mm -hmm. someone you don't know says something and it's like the gospel. It was sort of one of those <laughs> things. Yeah. And so um, I actually, with my first course, I seeded that course uh, by partnering with John Lee Dumas. He was oh. just uh, coming out with Podcasters Paradise at the time. And so he and I did some joint venture webinars and nice. helped one another uh, that way. He sends me coaching clients to this day, one-on-one wow. uh, -on -one coaching clients from that relationship. And so, okay. um, you know, I just taking that radio experience plus what I'd learned in the short time had been a podcaster. Uh, and much of my content complimented John's. Um, mine was much more the craft, the art of interviewing and, and mm -hmm. the craft of being a good host and talent coaching and things of mm -hmm. that nature, whereas John's stuff was more the nuts and bolts. And that's why our, our programs, I think, complemented one, one another so well. So that right. was my focus, and that's how I kind of distinguished myself. And, and people really seem to take to it, and, and it's kind of grown from, from there. Okay. Well, let's talk about some of the ways that it has grown and expanded. I mean, cause you have mm -hmm. think you have like mastermind groups and memberships. Yeah. And so talk a little bit more about the offerings that you have. Yeah. As, as I went along, you know, I just kept trying new things. If you look at my sort of monetization plan over the last seven, eight years, you know, it's like each year there's like a new emphasis and I didn't really have, uh, and Mike Kim, our mutual friend, Mike Kim talks about this in his uh, new book, which I just finished reading this morning. Um, and I didn't really have this intention when I started, I, I just would try something and, you know, launch a course and, and make some money from doing that. And then I would think, okay, what are some recurring revenue things I could do? And well, I could do a, a paid mastermind group or I could do a membership site and let me try that. And, and then the next thing it was, well, you know, group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, you know, now more recently it's been writing a book. And so, mm -hmm. um, I just, uh, I get bored easily, I guess. So I just kept <laughs> trying new things and many of these things have, you know, gone on to continue to make money every single month. Some of them are more, you know, launch focused or seasonal in nature. Sure. Um, but, um, I just sort of, uh, you know, as I've tried each of those, I've honed them. I've gotten better. Some of them, some I've done two or three times now, mm -hmm. uh, courses and whatnot. And so, um, uh, you know, I've, I've, as you mentioned earlier, I've, I've begun to bring voiceover into the mix. And so, uh, yeah, as, as each thing comes along, I just, I codify it. I, you know, do the SOPs. I, I, I write out, you know, procedures and all that kind of stuff. So that if I need to, I can take all that I've learned later and then teach that, you know, and, and, and provide that as, as further training to others trying to do what I'm doing down the road. Absolutely. Oh, man, that is so smart. So of all the things that you've been working on over the last eight years, which would you say was the most profitable to you, but not in terms of money? Something that's been profitable to you as a person that you feel like, that really meant a lot to me. Mm. Yeah, I would probably say um, my mastermind group uh, that I ran the most recent one for three years that had essentially, with a couple of exceptions, the same people mm -hmm. for duration. There were a couple of dropouts here and there and then some new people brought in. Um, but that is really rewarding to me. Um, just the opportunity to be in a room with like-minded people and people who are, aren't as far along as I am, but who are committed and who um, are really serious about, you know, turning this into a business and, and leaving a job and, 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 and supporting uh, their family or supplementing the family's income. Yeah. And just to be in that environment on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and, and, and truly help people, uh, realize some of those, those dreams, those things that I used to think I, I would never be able to accomplish. And now I've, I've begun to, and in a position to help other people do the same. It's just, there's just nothing better than that. Oh, I agree. In fact, of all your offerings, that was the one I was going to guess that was the most meaningful to you with <laughs> the mastermind groups. And it's just because we were created for connections. 
I mean, we just, mm, yeah, that's, that's how we're designed as people. We're meant to be in relationships with each other. And, mm. you know, it's podcasting is great, but it's really hard to have that connection with the audience when they're not right here with us. Sure. You know, that's why, you know, I have an appreciation for some podcast hosts who actually have their, a small audience in there while they're recording. I think they're doing it for that reason is to have that connection with some people and, and they play off of it a little bit too, of course, but mm -hmm. I, I think that has a lot to do with it. So one of the things that we talk about a lot on this podcast, not surprisingly because of the title is we talk a lot about relationships. Mm. And so something I ask every guest that I have come on is this, what are you doing in your most significant personal relationships right now? How are you building into those? And what sort of impact do those relationships have upon your business? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, you know, there's a lot of intentionality uh, involved in that process. That's a word that immediately comes to mind. Um, I am, if you were to look at my schedule, uh, you would see whether it's my digital calendar or the analog version in my planner, you would see very little white space. Mm -hmm. I had somebody I was, I was trying to instill in someone who was trying to get control of their, of their time. and was having trouble doing that. I was trying to get them to think in terms of planning out the week. And they looked at my schedule and they saw very little white space and their comment was, well, I don't want to be that busy. <laughs> and they, they didn't quite get what I was trying to, to get across. And that is, you know, I'm going to presumably, hopefully live throughout the week, live till the end of the week, right. Or the end of the month or the end of the year. Right. Let's go on that. Let's assume that. Well, if that's true, I could die tomorrow, but if that's true, I can decide now in advance how I'm going to spend that time, or I could make it up as I go or just plan certain appointments and, and not other key things and wonder at the end of it all, well, why didn't it go the way I thought it was going to go? Mm -hmm. um, so I develop much, you know, I'm a student of Michael Hyatt. So I have mm -hmm. an ideal week. I've identified what an ideal week looks like on paper. Now, does every week go that way? Usually not. But without first identifying the ideal, um, you're never going to have a snowball's chance in Hades of hitting it. So for sure. So you, you've got to identify that first. And I say all that because it's not until you're willing to, I think, invest uh, in that in those sort of methods before you can make sure that the relationships in your life get the attention they deserve. So yeah. You know, it's those relationships are, you know, the big rocks, you know, and I look <laughs> at my, my year or my, my quarter and I go, okay, well, where are those? Like, I've got an anniversary coming up soon, the, the big two Oh, you know? And so, yeah. So there's some, sort of some time been marked out on my calendar for quite a while for that relationship, especially around that time um, and vacations and, and other family events and that sort of thing. And friends, um, you know, my wife and I have a date day every Wednesday. That's um, I've got some buddies that I meet with almost every Thursday night and we, you know, uh, uh, enjoy a couple of cigars and some mm -hmm. scotch or, or, <laughs> or, or bourbon or whatever every now and then, you know? Okay. And so, um, I carve that time out intentionally first before anything else happens. Those are the big rocks. And mm -hmm. then I move to business and then I move to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And so, Okay. It's really about allowing for it's, it's not that my schedule is so regimented that there's no room for flexibility. I mean, I've built that in too, but I'm very intentional. I mean, I can binge Netflix with the best of them. I've got every subscription under the sun, the Hulu, the Disney, the whatever HBO right. max, you name it, I've got it. But if I'm doing that, it's because I've made an intentional decision that that's what I'm going to do right now. And at the end of it, I'm not going to regret that because I did it on purpose. Okay. Absolutely. I love that. You know, it's, you have <laughs> intentional margin built into your schedule. Yeah. That's exactly. what you're talking exactly. about there. And exactly. that's, and that's yeah. what confuses some people is they see mm -hmm. a calendar completely filled and they think you're busy. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, I'm not busy. It's everything is calendared out. That's all it exactly is. Right. Just, and I, yeah. I know what I'm doing from one 
segment to the next. Uh, it's the having a lot of white space in the schedule that can really throw a lot of people off. And that's when they have problems keeping track of things and things get missed. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was me many, many years ago, but I mean, no longer, <laughs> but many years ago. Well, we are, we're coming up to our wrap up time. And before we get to it, I have a final four that I put everybody through at the end. It's, mm -hmm. it's different things than we've talked about before. And you're just, you're going to tell me the first thing that pops in your head. But before you okay. do that, I have two other quick questions. First one is mm -hmm. who is an ideal client or in this case, potential podcast guest for Jeff? Yeah, to me, uh, uh the ideal client is shifting. I've, I've, I'm still doing podcast related coaching and teaching and mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, more right now than I've done in the last year and a half, maybe because of COVID, I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm beginning with the launch of my book coming out and some other content I'm developing to really move into uh, personal development, professional development related mm -hmm. coaching mm -hmm. centered around particularly habits Oh, cool. um, as I've interviewed 370 some odd people, I have discovered that uh, all, all these people are successful in one way or another. They wouldn't be writing books. Um, they're changing the world. Mm -hmm. And I have found that there are five things that nearly all of them have in common. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm wanting to get out and train and teach and workshop mm -hmm. these habits uh, with CEOs and presidents and pastors and entrepreneurs and business owners, because in fact, I was just uh, giving a presentation to uh, a group yesterday of about 50 people online mm. um, on these habits. Um, because I think when you successfully install these five habits, um, everything else falls into place. Mm. Uh, it, and it's, it's really, and Mike Kim says this is in his new book, uh, when you, when I work on myself uh, and, and make that the emphasis, money just tends to just roll in. And mm. the odd thing is, is when it does, you care less about the money. Right. Um, and so that's, that's kind of uh, something I can get behind. And, and it's really a teaching people about how to put on their own mask first before trying to help somebody else with theirs. And that when you yeah. do that, the rest of life, it's, it's real simple. So to answer your question again, it's CEOs, you know, it's presidents, it's, it's executives, it's, it's people who, um, as one person said to me yesterday, you know, how do you do some of this, Jeff, when I go to bed at night exhausted? Um, you know, how do, how do I, how do I, how do I stop going to bed exhausted? What are some, how, how can I implement these habits in such a way mm -hmm. that that ends? And so um, I'm really passionate about that. and looking forward to doing more work in that space. Great. Great. Okay. Um, last question before our final four, how can folks find you, Jeff? Cause I guarantee you there's going to be people after they hear or see this episode are like, I need to connect with Jeff. What are some ways that people can do that? Yeah, uh, probably the best way is read to lead podcast.com. Mm -hmm. um, there'll soon be a site for the book. It's not up yet. Uh, it won't be up until mid July, but uh, read to lead podcast.com is, is the best way right now. Okay, perfect. And folks, we will be sure the various ways to connect with Jeff and the other things that we talked about during this episode, we will put those in the show notes for you. So you'll have direct links to all of those. All right. Now we come to our final four. This is, <laughs> this is a very fun time for me. And you know, th these are meant to be fun, somewhat lighthearted, but they are thought provoking as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So now this set of final four is going to be different than the set that I'll give you when we talk about your book. So, mm, okay. All right. So here we go. Question number one, why did God create Jeff? Hmm. Wow. Um, I think God created Jeff, um, to help people realize that they're in more control of what happens to them in life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I think most of us, um, react to the things that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think attitude is a big part of that. And so I'm a big believer in 
helping people alter their mindset and understand that your reaction, your response to things that happen to you is the, you know, 90% of, of life. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a long-winded answer to your question, but, but I used to be that other kind of person mm -hmm. who, who felt like, you know, life, you know, the cards you're dealt with, the cards you're dealt. But mm -hmm. I think when you, when you think about who you surround yourself with, when you think about what you allow in, um, and, and I'm, I think God made me to help people understand that when you begin changing those things, that you have the, control, the ability to change those things. And when you begin doing that, some pretty awesome, amazing things start happening. Oh, fantastic. Love that. All right. Question number two, what are you doing, reading, or listening to right now that's helping you grow? Every day, um, I get up in the morning and read at least three things. One of those is the Bible. And um, I went through the whole Bible last year for the first time. <laughs> it took me a while uh, in life to do that, but I went through the whole Bible. Uh, but this year I've been going through uh, the Bible app and just I just read the verse of the day and then go through the entire little story that they have in the app where they start with the verse of the day and then there's someone who presents a pastor um, or, or, or other person on that, uh, that verse of the day. And then there's a written uh, devotional that goes with that and then a prayer. And I go through each of those every morning. So that's about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And I read from John Maxwell's Leadership Promises for Every Day, which is a you know, uh, yearly or daily devotional that covers the whole year. Read that excerpt. And I'm my second year now of doing that without mm. missing a day. Wow. I also read from Ryan Holiday's The Daily Stoic every single mm. day. And I'm in my second year of doing that okay. as well. So I learned from, you know, Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and those guys mm. and how they thought. So I'm reading all three of those every single day. And then depending on the week that we're, you know, this week was Mike Kim week. So I was reading yeah. Mike's uh, book, uh, You yeah. Are the Brand. Right. Uh, and boy, what a, what a very practical book uh, that's been. I know you've read it. And so next week it'll be another book, but uh, that's, that's the one that, uh, that's most recent for me. And I right. loved it immensely. Perfect. Perfect. And again, folks, the things that Jeff's mentioning, we'll be sure to include in the show mm -hmm. notes. So you can check those out. Uh, question number three. It, this is a two-parter, and you'll understand why. What do you do for fun, and what do you do with Annie for fun? Mm -hmm. Love this. Um, I'm a movie buff, and so um, Friday nights, sometimes Saturday nights, I love to just sit in my living room. We we've we we don't watch much television. I need to I need to preface this, but we don't watch. My TV is off probably ninety percent of the time. Mm -hmm. But come time to watch a movie, there's a 65-inch television screen, 4K. Nice. And then a Dolby Atmos-capable system, audio system that, you know, um, is, is three-dimensional sound, you know, just like you would get at a movie theater, right? Oh, that's just so not surprising. <laughs> so, <laughs> Did you have yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, I'm all about the sound being a radio guy. There you and go. so, you know, most people are like, oh, give me the four, you know, the 4K screen, if that, give me the great picture. And then they neglect the sound or maybe they have a, a sound bar and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Not to not to poo poo that or anything, but I want to experience the film as best I can in my living room, the way the um, the creator of that film intended. Yeah. And that's that's a fun experience for me. So so that is one thing I really enjoy. Annie loves that as well. So that's something we enjoy. We'll much more likely do that at home than go out. Okay. But we love, besides that, exploring new restaurants. Um, I wouldn't call us foodies, but we really enjoy a lot of the same uh, cuisine. Uh, cuisine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we love going and trying new places and, and just having, having fun together doing that. And on our date days every Wednesday, that's often what we're doing is trying some new place for lunch. Very fun. Love that. Love that. Mm. All right. And last question. Hmm. What are you most grateful for? Wow. And if you Gosh, can't limit to... it, to, if you can't <laughs> limit it to one, give us a top three. Yeah. Top three uh, would be Annie. Um, yeah. When I'm thinking, you know, uh, uh, things of this earth, Annie uh, certainly would be numero uno. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my family, um, my dad has since passed, uh, <laughs> but my mom and siblings, um, you know, I'm so grateful for them. 
uh, and and the friends uh, that I have and colleagues that have have you know helped me in my business and my personal life and um, and all that I'm trying to accomplish. And I'm just thankful to breathe another day, John. I'm thankful to God every day that I get mm-hmm. to to wake up and do this again. I try. I don't always do this, but when I wake up and I sit up in the bed first thing in the morning before my feet hit the ground, I start with telling myself out loud, today is going to be a great day. Hmm. Um, and when I can start the day like that um, and, you know, prayerfully uh, and you know, putting God first, one of my favorite verses is Matthew six thirty three. put first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Mm-hmm. And so I, I mean, I'm, I'm not hundred percent successful at that any more than anybody else is, but that's what I try to live by. And, um, and so I would say God, family, Annie, uh, are in that, in that top three. <laughs> Love that, man. Love that. Absolutely. And we go back to what we were saying before relationships, we were designed yeah, for yeah. relationships. It's just, which ones are we talking about? So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for your time today. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Viewers and listeners, I hope that you have gotten something from this. If you haven't, something is wrong with you. I'm just (laughs) telling you. (laughs) I'm being straight with you, as I always am. If you haven't gotten something from what Jeff has said today, hit me back with a DM. We'll talk about it, and I'll help you find something that you can use from this <laughs> if you couldn't find something on your own. But I'm pretty sure you can. So, again, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, again, thank you for having me here, John. It was a lot of fun. And anytime you want me to come back, I'm happy to do it. Oh, man, that's fantastic. You heard him, folks. You heard him say it. So, all right. All right. And for those of you who, listen and watch on a regular basis. I am so grateful and thankful for all of you. Thank you so much for being here, for giving me something you can never get back. And that's your time. And I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, If you could do me one quick favor before we end, and that is let me know what you're thinking about the show. How you can let me know are those ratings and reviews. Jeff knows this. They are the lifeblood of our podcast. It's how people find us it's how we know how we're doing we look for ways to improve that way so if you could let me know that would be fantastic and whatever platform you view and or listen to this on i would really appreciate that so thank you all very much for being here and we'll talk to you guys next time bye everybody thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to the channel click on that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every single time a new video comes out